uh, for a little because you, you've been to Iraq, something I've never been to. And my first question to you is exactly this. Um, you were sent to uh, review the situation of the Christians and Yazidis and other religious minorities. So I uh, would like to know what did you learn about it and what the administration policies, the policy changes that came after this trip? Yes. Well, at the behest of Vice President Pence uh, last summer, I traveled to northern Iraq uh, with Sam Brownback, former governor of Kansas and my neighbor in Nebraska who is now Ambassador for International Religious Freedom, and Mark Green, the head of the United States Agency for International Development, uh, to evaluate the funds that, uh, working with the administration, we had shifted to the direct rebuilding of Christian and Yazidis and certain uh, Muslim minority communities who had been decimated by ISIS. Uh, the twisted, dark theology of ISIS and their genocidal attempts to destroy entire populations were not only an affront to me and most Americans, but, but people of goodwill and the principles of civilization itself. So as you are aware, Iraq once had a rich pluralism, a, a mosaic, a tapestry of ancient faith traditions. Uh, there were some hard times but there were also lots of times where there was the space for tolerance and this pluralism that we in the West take for granted. So uh, upon evaluation there, I came back with just three words. It's possible. There, the possibility really does exist that the religious minorities could return home and build and maybe, just maybe, thrive once again. The situation is urgent. And third, it depends upon security. Without security, all of this aid is not sustainable. The Yazidi communities, many 400,000 are trapped in refugee-like camps. Uh, some people have gone back to Sinjar, but it is not safe enough for people to return to their former communities. Same with the Christian communities. We were in a small town called Telescope to visit with the young priest who had returned there with 20 young people to rebuild this ancient Christian town. And five minutes away they couldn't travel to another town because militias were in control there, just five minutes away. So it is a very mixed story, but until you have a secure environment, how can someone with a family take a reasonable risk to return? So they're caught either in the Kurdish areas or in Lebanon or in other places, there's pressure for out-migration. In the meanwhile, militias fill the vacuum. Some of the militias are underwritten by Iran, and that has other geopolitical consequences as well. So my consideration has been this. Let's develop a security resolution that lays down a marker, that makes a clear statement of U.S. policy coming from the House of Representatives that establishes an international training mission, a counterterrorism mission, if you will, that integrates Christians and Yazidis and other religious minorities into the Iraqi central government's security forces under the Iraqi central government flag with some degree of space, autonomy, a control of their own areas so that ISIS can never regenerate itself. So that people are safe, people can return home, the communities, communities can rebuild, and there will be this, again, possibility of reintegration of these ancient faith traditions who have every much a right to be there as anyone else into the social fabric of Iraq and into the, the system of governance. That's the idea here.